Hello Dave is brought to you ad-free by my supporters on Patreon. Become a Patreon yourself and get your name listed as a supporter at the end of every video by following the link in the video description. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Hello Dave with Downworth Astronomy. Today we're speculating a little bit about the launch of the 3.3 update and when it might uh, drop. A new planet has been discovered in our solar system and you have the chance to choose the topic of the next live stream. So let's get started with the Q4 or the 3.3 update. I think it's a couple of weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, since Frontier said that the beta for the patch is right around the corner. Now, we haven't seen anything yet. We haven't seen any date being announced, but historically Frontier would, with stuff like this, not announce it at all. They would just say, here's the beta, it's now live. Um, we've seen that before, and I very much expect that's what's gonna happen again. But that's not going to stop me from trying to give a, give a qualified guess to when this will be implemented. Now, there was a post um, a while ago, not a while ago, yeah, a while ago on the forum, where they, um, they talked about the new system with implementing um, player factions. That's now a more automated system. Um, but... The description, for some reason, the description of the factions, that needs to be deployed uh, later on during a point update. So that's why that's a separate thing. The reason why this is interesting in terms of the next patch is because there was a post saying that after the 8th of October, they are not going to be able to um, um, to do any manual updates. Um, that's the last chance if you want to get a part as this manual update. There are factory descriptions if you want that updated. Um, so... That at least means that we're probably not going to see before the 8th of October, but again, that is today. So, what that means for the patch, well, we know that they in that they before a beta, they always take a backup of the live server. Um, that's often done a week or two before the, the, the beta actually goes live. Um, and I, I expect that to be their uh, fallback in case something goes wrong. At least they take a backup of, um, of the live server. And um, and then that's the one you will play on on the beta, so that it's two complete separate things. And I was I was theorizing if the the eight of October thing is the day when they do this update. Um, if they for some reason don't want to implement in case they have to fall, I don't know. It it that could be something along those lines that we're going to see that that's when they do the update on the eighth. Um, if that's the case, I would probably expect the beta to come out a, a week later. So around the 16th, maybe the, um, so sometimes next week, maybe. Uh, it could be that that's just because that's the day before they're doing the actual launch and they don't want new factory descriptions doing beta. I'm not exactly sure how this is all related, but at least, well, it seems like that the 8th is some kind of deadline for internally for Frontier in terms of the preparations for, for, the, for the update. Um, but again... I'm really hoping that we're going to see this um, this beta being launched pretty soon, and um, so we can go in, we can try out the new, especially the new mining in my case, and the new exploration systems, and all the other goodies that's going to be added um, in that patch. And and of course, I will uh, I'll do my very best to uh, to cover it once uh, once the beta is live and once that happens. And uh, of course, um, just before you guys post it and add ask in the comments, it is an open beta. If you play on PC, you can join it, and it's free. So. Um, Keep an eye on the forums, keep an eye on Twitter, Frontier, like, have to sometimes spread this information out, so sometimes it's only on Twitter, sometimes it's only on forums, sometimes it's, I don't know. But I would expect them to at least do a, a forum post when um, when that uh, beta goes live, so uh, keep an eye on that, and um, yeah. Let's move on, and, um, and let's talk about the new planet that's been discovered. Um, the planet is called... 2015 TG387. So from the name we can see that this planet was first discovered in 2015, three years ago. Um, the reason why this is interesting, um, it's another one of those, I'm, I'm actually not sure if this is classified as a dwarf planet or a actual planet. Because the definition is, is a little, in my opinion, is a little stupid. So a dwarf planet has nothing to do with the size of the planet. I mean, well, it has, but... 
for anything to be considered either a dwarf planet or a planet, um, it first of all needs to have a orbit around the sun, that's the first thing. Secondly, it needs to have a strong enough gravitational field that it is mostly round. So anything that's like weird potato shaped doesn't really count as a planet because its gravity is not strong enough. And then the last thing is the thing that differentiates a planet from a dwarf planet is whether the planet has been able to clear its orbit of other objects. So that's why Pluto suddenly was went from being a planet to a dwarf planet because well the, the moon and and there's the, the, Pluto's moon is almost the same size as the planet itself. So it's not, it's not uh, it has been able to clear other similar sized objects in its path and therefore Pluto is technically a dwarf planet. Even though Pluto is bigger than than the, the planet discovered here. I think this one is only like 300 kilometers in diameter. That's tiny. It's a tiny tiny thing. Um and it's in a very elliptical orbit. Closest point is around twice the orbit of Jupiter. Um, or I think is that something like 80 AU or something like that. Um, and the furthest point is 2300. So you can see <laughs> AU. So as you can see, it's a very, very elongated orbit, which tells me that this is most likely a captured object. Um, sometimes when you have, when a solar system is formed, you would expect all this, uh, the planets to be mostly in the same plane, orbit around it, and be fairly close to the star. But you can, later in the planets, or the solar system's life, you can have rogue planets, so planets that for some reason has been ejected from another system, or just flying without orbiting a star, can sometimes be captured by other stars. Um, and those of course be called captured object. And these would often end in very uh, elongated orbits and they would of course often not align with the disk that all the other planets are in. So since the orbit is so elongated, I think it's very unlikely that this was something that was formed together with the solar system. Um, or if it was, it was at least flung out in this uh, very elongated orbit during the early life of, uh, of the solar system. But the reason why all this is interesting, because we already have plenty, plenty of, uh, of small like planetoids out in or planets and dwarf planets out in, uh, in in that area of space is that if we study the gravitation um, of the if we study the orbit of it we can begin to see if there's any um, anomalies in where we um, expect it to be so basically we can take the, the position of all the known planets and we can then do a numerical calculation, set a big computer to ask that to do that and it will then be able to calculate the orbit of all the planets very very carefully and very accurately. Now, if the planets then begin to deviate from our calculations, that probably means that there's something that we didn't include in our um, um, in our simulation. And I mean, we got the math, we got the science down. This has been known for hundreds and hundreds of years. So, so that's that's we got that pretty bang on, I think. But we've seen this before. I think that was actually how Neptune was um, was discovered. Um, that. You, they knew about uh, Uranus, and they then they were able that it, the planet was uh, was observed, and they didn't really fit with where the uh, the orbit was. It was kind of off compared to where it was supposed to be. So you did the backwards calculation, said so if this orbit is to to uh, if we had to uh, have another object that would influence the orbit in such a way that we sh it would fit with the anomalies that we see, where would that planet be? You could then calculate the position, size, mass of the planet point your telescope in that direction, and there you go, new planet discovered. So that's why it's interesting to have a, a when you find these new objects, because we can then be able to plug those in to our um, simulations, and it actually seems like, because the orbits are kind of being shepherded by something, so there is, it, it seems like there is something out there, um, like, I think it's at least 200 light, oh sorry, light, light, yes, uh, AU, astronomical units, away from this uh, from the sun. So it is quite far out and it's not going to be that massive. It's going to be very, very hard to see. Um, but at least it's interesting, I think, that when we find these planets, it's going to make it uh, that we can use this to, uh, to locate um, what has been referred to as Planet 9, because it would be the ninth planet in our solar system. Anyway, let's uh, let's quickly move on to uh, to live streams. I have two things before I move on to my old live stream. I just want to mention that on Saturday at fifteen hundred in game time, I'm gonna join the um, 
the final uh, like live stream talk show from the um, dead end dead end circumnavigation expedition which is a bunch of guys who started out a year ago from the bubble have been circumnavigating around the outer edge uh, but circumnavigating the whole galaxy they're coming back to the bubble and i'm joining them for their last uh, talk show they've hosted live streams and talk shows doing um, every time they reach the base camp and uh, this time they're flying from the last base camp and going back to the bubble um, and it's going to be a huge number of ships. Um, I'll, I might host it on my on my Twitch channel, but at least I'm going to join that. So if you're interested and you want to uh, to follow these guys on the last lake home, um, it's 1500 in game time on Saturday the 30th. So I'll post a link for for the Twitch channel in um, uh, in the description, so you can go and you can follow that if you want to. And my own live stream is of course business as usual tomorrow at uh, seven o'clock in game time and topic for tomorrow is actually going to be up to you guys i i thought i would try to uh, to put it out uh, for a vote so everybody can can uh, can basically go up and, and vote for what they want so I put up three options um either i take out the corvette the cube cumber um, that thing haven't really been uh, been out flying for quite a while so i think it could be fun to to take that out for a bit and um Maybe have a look at some of those uh, new pirate uh, things that has been added. I can't remember the name of them. But I, I, there was something um, that I haven't really been looking too much into. Um, alternatively, take out the um, um, the Lancelot, my mining python, and go and do a little bit of mining. See if we can find some decent profit mining missions and uh, go and haul in some, um, some ore. And the final option is uh, once again going out and hunting listening posts. These live streams have been very popular in the past, and I found one that's not in the Pleiades sector this time, so I thought that could be interesting to go and have a look at that and uh, and see where that leaves us. Um, maybe ho hopefully something that's not been attacked by Thargoids this time, because everything we find in the Pleiades sector seems to be base attacked by Thargoids. Um, but anyway, I'm going to try to post it as a poll here on YouTube, so there should be more info icon up here. Click that. And there's a poll, and you can vote, and uh, then of course tune in tomorrow, and we will see what um, what I'll be doing. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. That's it from uh, Hello Dave today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. And until next time, I'll see you guys in space.